Hello to all of you ladies and viewers. Welcome back to Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening. I am presenting to you this wonderful kick-ass Divine Feminine Round Table. We have Bryce, Natalie, Liz, and Ava. How is everyone doing today? Great. Fantastic. <laughs> How are you? Doing good. Wait for her to be optimistic. Come on, guys. Like, <laughs> kick-ass round table. Let's do this shit. I feel like it's more so like, who's going to talk first? All right. Yeah. <laughs> Should we, like, raise our hands? Like, yeah. <laughs> hey, teacher, I have a question. So before we get started, Liz, Bryce, and I are going to show off this new shirt that was, um, Liz, if you want to kind of take the lead on this. Sorry, we're showing you our boobies. <laughs> no, I'm just lifting my up. I'm not giving you the goods. <laughs> like, look at my shirt. No. <laughs> so you you had a subscriber that designed this shirt on your website. Um, yeah. And um, he decided to uh, have you send Bryce and I one of them. So uh, Bryce and I want to thank that person that did that for us. Um, this is very, very sweet gesture. I love this shirt. So thank you so much. Um, and so I'm going to link below um, Liz's. Uh, Etsy shop. You can go check her shop out. She's got some pretty kick-ass shirts. She's got tank tops, sweatshirts, regular t-shirts. I even saw a phone case on there, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. And tote bags now. Yeah. Ooh. Awesome. Expanding. So please go support Liz and um, get something from her Etsy shop. Um, it's very high quality and I have a couple of her shirts at this point. So um, that will be in the description box below. So today we're going to be talking about a couple topics here. We're going to be talking about fasting because there is a right way, a wrong way, and also there is a lot of the Ayurvedic way as well, which Bryce will get into because she, she's our dosha queen. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we're going to also talk about a little bit about detoxing and alkalizing the body. So I think a lot of the topics we've been presenting is a lot of health stuff, Um and so um, this is the time to really get healthy and everything. So we're going to start off with fasting, which I don't know my head for my ass when it comes to fasting. I've tried. And guess what? I end up in a hypoglycemic attack, like hardcore turn into bitchosaurus rex. We don't want that. So I'm going to actually have Bryce take this away just with the whole dosha thing, because she explained it to me. And this is why I probably go into dinosaur mode when yeah. I fast. Yeah. I mean, fasting alone is going to trigger emotions, of course, when uh, your body is going without, when it's used to having, you know, it, there's a discipline behind fasting for sure. And um, oh, I've done it before. A lot of people, I, sh I shouldn't have, and I'll, I'll get into that. Um, a lot of spiritual disciplines uh, talk about fasting. The benefits of fasting are it, it does kind of clear you out. Um, because food is energy, as we know, that's the whole Ayurvedic principle and energy can influence your thought patterns, um, your perspective. But with that being said, if you are considering fasting, you need to consider a couple of things. The first being what is your leading dosha? So my leading dosha is Vata. I am Vata Pitta. So Vata is air. Now, one of the, the symptoms or the effects of being a vata is the way we regulate our hunger. So uh, most people, when they think about getting hungry, they think about their stomach growling. For a vata, by the time the stomach growls, you're already basically, you're about to pass out. As a vata, I, I regulate my hunger by how well I, if I feel myself zoning out first, that's when I know that I need to eat something. Uh, vatas no, typically need to eat every couple of hours. Uh, vatas are typically uh, people that live, uh, like my mother always makes fun of me that I eat like a bird. Um, I eat kind of uh, every couple of hours, I force myself just to snack a little bit snack a little bit. That's, that's how the Vatas do, do the best. Actually, Tamara, our friend Tamara, she does that as well. And she's very Vata. Um, and she kind of eats like a bird throughout the day. That's very much uh, how the Vatas regulate their energy. And so as far as fasting goes, even with intermittent fasting, so that's something that I really, really enjoy is intermittent fasting. And that's what works well for me. So what I do is I typically stop eating around five o'clock in the afternoon. And I won't eat again until after I've practiced or worked out the next morning. Cause I do do my exercise and workout early in the morning. Cause I, I do follow Brahma Morta, 
with that being the Vata time of day. And that's when you should be doing your exercise because that's when you're the clearest, your head's the clearest. And there's a couple reasons for that. So I'll go about 12 to 14 hours without food. Now for me as a Vata, that works the best because during most of that time, I'm asleep. And so it's not affecting me in the way it would affect me if I was awake. But the, the kicker with fasting and how it benefits everyone is your colon, even though your colon is constantly working, your organs are constantly working, it does need some time to rest. So what that means is if you're constantly eating and you're not giving yourself a break, the, the, your colon is constantly just trying to break down the food that you're giving it. When you cease to eat for a little while, what the colon can then do is start to pull out the toxins from the bloodstream and start to pull that rest from actually breaking down food, if that makes sense. And so for most vatas, that type of fasting is, is the best type of fasting. Now, when it comes to like cleansing fasting, because there's detoxing and there's cleansing. A lot of people, y'all remember back in like the early 2000s, the juice cleanse got really big. Mm-hmm. where people would like poop out seven pounds. It was, yeah. there was a moment. It was like a badge of you honor. You could buy that Hollywood, that big jug of the Hollywood oh, juice. Yeah. So, yeah. Hollywood yeah. Diet. That made me so sick. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so if you're Vata, that is the absolute worst thing you can do. Well, I found that out. Well, I'm trying dosha. So, so it's going to be hard for like, you. I feel like my fasting though, the whole, my symptoms with the fasting, like when you said how you figure out you're hungry, I don't have a stomach growl. I will feel like I'm about to pass out. My personality will change. Yeah. Um, and then you hear in the sirens, they've been going left and right all day today. Um, but uh, sorry, squirrel. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I will feel like I'm going to pass out. I get like really disoriented. I get, you know, really bitchy, um, like personality change. It's not the true Stephanie, something <laughs> bad. It's really, really bad. Um, my son will say, mom is getting ha- hangry. <laughs> um, so that's kind of like my sign that I'm getting hungry. I have to really like nibble throughout the day too, to keep my energy. But at the same time, I have to eat the opposite of you. Yeah. So what I would say with you, Stephanie, and what I would, and I would venture to say that, so hypoglycemia really only affects vatas, people who lead with vatas. So what I would say with you, I would test it in like six months and see if it, because I think what's happened was happening with you is that you were eating foods that were totally wrong for your body. So you weren't getting the nutrients. And so you're, you thought you were hypoglycemic because your body was triggering you to eat more because it wasn't getting so you were having these symptoms of needing food, but it's because the body couldn't do anything with the food you were giving it, if that makes yeah. sense. And I think once everything starts to shift, you're going to find a huge difference. I and already have. Yeah. And I will yeah. say too, this is another important thing. Now, intermittent fasting is different. Um, that can be done any, all, most people who do intermittent fasting, they can do it because you are taking in food within a 24 hour period. Um, but as far as like a full on fast where you're going to go a week without eating, that's kind of what a lot of people will do sometimes, especially in big time spiritual disciplines or um, in order to cleanse themselves, because that does go into the cleansing uh, aspect of fasting. You do not want to do that unless it's intermittent. That's, that's the exception to the rule. If you're at a junction of the seasons, that's also the, it's the same thing with detoxing. You never, 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 never want to do a detox at the junction of seasons. Interesting. So how much space would you put in between the junction and when you can actually, like, is it a week? Like how long does that energy I would last go right for? in the middle of the season. So okay. I would go, I, I would avoid fall and spring. Cause I feel like, especially where I live now, where you, where everyone else lives, that's a, just a different story. Depends on where you live because, um, and I mean, Liz and I can attest to this in the South. It's like hot, 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 hot. Ooh, one day of nice, fall weather, kind of cold, kind of cold. Ooh, one day of spring. And then all of a sudden it's falls hot again. Right. And so when you're notice yourself, when you're going through that junction of a season, anyway, you're probably a little bit more tired. Um, we have time change in fall and spring, your body's having to recalibrate to whatever uh, season you're going into. There's different energies associated with seasons. Like the fall is the, 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 de- the, the world is detox or your world, whether you're in the Northern or Southern hemisphere is detoxing itself. The spring is rebirth. There's different energies to that. And so your body, one of the rules of Ayurveda 
is that you cannot be pure, more pure than your environment. Mm -hmm. So if you live in a city, I tell my students this all the time. If you like, I live right smack dab, as I was saying, I can't see jack shit stars in the sky. I don't know if there's ships above me. Exactly. All I see is skyscrapers mm -hmm. because I live in a very, um, uh, cities are Vata because there's a lot of lights, action sounds. There's a lot of chi, a lot of prana here. And because there's smog, there's toxins, there's a lot of people here. Um, I tell my students, we're lucky we get to go have a slice of cheese pizza and a beer, you know, because we can't every once in a while because we can't be that pure. That wonderful. <laughs> now, if you live in the middle of nowhere, like if you have hungry, <laughs> if you live in the North Georgia mountains, you can live like a totally vegan, you know, because you can match your environment that way. So we think about it that way in the simplistic terms of how energy works. <sighs> when you're at a junction of the season, you can carrying all this? Mm -mm. Nope. No. I think Zoom, like the sound is cutting it out. Like, holy, holy sirens. Oh my God. Sorry. I'm like, it's like so imagine, loud. In a city, there's like, always sirens and car alarms going off. This no is, this is, <laughs> this is very weird for this area. So. I live out in East Bumfuck. Well, and so I would say, like, for you, if you want to do fasting, like, a, like intermittent fasting, again, that's a different story because you are yes. <laughs> you are taking in food. So it's just about giving your colon a time to rest, which I do a lot of. Is yeah, the intermittent same. fasting? Yeah, um, that I can do. If you're wanting to do the fasting that that borderlines detox, like five days, whatever, I would pick a a week in the middle of either the summer or the winter to do it. When your body's already alkaline to the environment, um, mm -hmm. obviously don't pick a week when you're going to have a lot of activities to do. It needs to be a, you need to be able to control your environment because you don't want to be um, putting out too much energy when you're not taking in any energy, you know? So <laughs> I totally <laughs> did the opposite of that. Cause I just have a lot of energy. <laughs> I did. Which we talked days. about on a video last time. So Ava, why don't you um, <laughs> talk about your experience? <laughs> um, so I started out with um, 21 days of intermittent fasting, fasting and just going um, longer and longer without eating. And then I kind of took a break. So this was May into July, actually, of last year. And then I would go like one day and then okay, that was easy. Wait a few days. And then I tried to, then I wait a few more days. Um, long story short, I got to four days and I could have easily done five, but at that same time, I was still waking up and lifting in the morning, running <laughs> a 5k. Like I would run like three, three miles. And then even one day I lifted, ran, and I hiked for like two hours after that. And I don't know, I'm just like this energizer bunny. And it just feels, I don't, it just felt good. I felt clean. I didn't think about being hungry at that point. Also, um, I take magnesium uh, gluconate and um, uh, potassium chloride and Himalayan salt. I, I do a jug of that and I drink it all day. And that helps with um, like, electrolyte re electrolyte replenishment it helps with the muscle I was, yeah i was gonna bring up electrolytes too yeah yeah muscle yeah. and brain function and then also um the saltiness of the water is kind of it's satiating too it's almost like i got to a point where i wanted it because that was kind of like that's the only thing that i was tasting you know so so, yeah. it was your your salty water that was my snack yeah. was salt water <laughs> Well, and I'm so glad you brought up electrolytes because this has actually happened to me before. And I remember my grandfather, my mother used to do like Weight Watchers and like Jenny Craig and all. Like she would drink these big old jugs of water because they would tell you to. And um, there is such a thing as overhydration. And overhydrating yourself is almost as dangerous as dehydration. It actually might be even more dangerous than de you're, you're basically flooding out your organs. And it happened to me one time and it was probably the sickest I have, have ever been. I was overhydrated mm -hmm. and I literally could not stand up. I had to go lay down. Like it was awful. I had no idea what was going on. And I had over, I had drank too much water basically. So when we talk about drinking water, you know, who says we're supposed to have eight glasses a day? This is all what, what we it's know for everyone. It's different for everyone. What we know about the human body from Ayurveda is that it's not one size fits all. And so I am very aware of electrolytes. I actually, uh, my first 
big thing of water I drink every morning, I put electrolytes into the water because I'm, because that's what's happening when you're overhydrated is you've lost all those electrolytes. And that's very, your body needs that. And it is salt. There is a lot, there's a lot of uh, B vitamins in that. And so that is something to be very aware of, especially if you are going to fast is possibly putting electrolytes into your water just to make sure your body is getting that um, that, especially if you're not eating anything, but you're trying to like flush out with a bunch of water because water does flush you out. You have to be aware of overhydration. And I don't see, I don't know, Ava, maybe you had a different experience with the gym life with Equinox, but I don't see people talking about overhydration that much at all. No, and it's a problem. Mm -hmm. Even, and I, I mean, I'm from Texas, so we had triple digit summers and mm -hmm. that summer goes into like, usually like until Halloween. And then all of a sudden it's yeah. like, boom, cold, and you know, the night that everyone wants to wear like no clothes and then it's cold, but <laughs> like, yeah. So, you know, it's really funny because we talk about drinking water, drinking water, drinking water, you know, stay hydrated because it's so, so hot, but there's never any speak about going past that point. And, um, I know that my, another one of the trainers at Equinox, she had a daughter that played club soccer and they would use like a, a pea color chart to tell their mm -hmm. hydration level. Um, but it, I mean, that only goes so far because if it's clear, then yes, you're hydrated, but like, are you past the point right. of necessary hydration too? So I think that's a good point because people don't typically talk about that. Mm -hmm. It's awful. It's, I mean, that was one of the worst. I mean, I've been sick. Trust me. I've been in Indian hospital more times than you guys can count. I've, I've had the weirdest things happen to me, but that was awful. And it was, it, it, you lose, you kind of lose your, um, you, you feel like you're not in your body anymore. It's like your body, your organs like start to shut down basically because you're, you're flooding them out. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's the same thing here in Georgia. I remember the day it happened. I, it was such a hot day and I, I obviously had practiced, I taught, I had taken the dog out and I was concerned about making sure I was hydrated enough and I overdid it. And the P chart thing is good too. I, I know people, the clear, if your P is completely clear, yeah, it means you're hydrated. But from what I hear from other pe from people that know a lot about overhydration is you actually want a little bit of that yellow tent. Mm -hmm. Like if it's too clear, that's a sign that you need to stop, stop drinking water. Like yeah. just stop, you know. I wonder if it also has to do with drinking like pure water. Like if it has electrolytes in it, it helps get into your organs and stuff easier. Mm -hmm. um, but everyone's drinking pure water, which actually pulls electrolytes and stuff out because mm -hmm. it has to like balance that water out. Yeah. So I wonder um, that if that has something to do with it as well. Like you're by drinking more water, you're actually like, dehydrating yourself. Which I drink filter. I've drunk, I mean, filter water for years. Obviously, I think most of us have who are in this community. We know it's, mm -hmm. that's a good point. And that's what sweat is. So if you're an athlete, if you are, work out at all and you sweat, that's the electrolytes that are, you need to replace those. Yeah. And so I did a fast once and I did like a bone broth fast and that fast wasn't that bad. And then I did a water fast. That was the worst fast of my life, but I think it's because I wasn't aware of the electrolytes. There's sodium in broth, and there's mm -hmm. other nutrients mm -hmm. in the broth, mm -hmm. and um, that's pro it probably replenished what you were losing. Yeah, versus yeah, but the I think water it and the electrolytes. The water for me. Can you yeah. speak about the broth? Now I'm a vegetarian, so I wouldn't be doing bone broth, but I've heard of this. Uh, people talk about this a lot. This is a form of fasting, and a lot of people think, "Oh, bone broth, I can't, you know, nothing in my body." But I'm glad you brought that up, Natalie, because that is another form of fasting that is better for people who are like Vata. I know, Natalie, you're Vata. I can tell right away from seeing you that you, you, you carry a lot of Vata, too. So, so um, bone broth fasting is a good way to, if you want to do like water fasting, it's a good way to like build yourself up to it instead of like shocking the system. Sometimes you have to build up to it um, because most people aren't used to not eating at all. So you need to really balance out your blood sugar and just your nutrients and that kind of stuff. So I did the bone broth fast first um, because I, I wasn't sure if I could do the water fast. I'm like, I have to build myself up a little bit. And so my mom actually makes um, homemade bone broth. So she made a bunch for me and I froze it and I would just drink um, like four or eight cups a day, just kind of however much I was feeling. And it gives you a bunch of collagen and stuff. So it kind of helps your body rebuild during the fast because it, you have so much more blood and energy able to rebuild stuff since you're not digesting food. So it's kind of like an aid as well mm -hmm. to 
give you the amino acids, give you the building blocks to replace, um, to heal your intestines and stuff. Yeah. Well, it's interesting too. I mean, what do we normally drink when we're sick or we're throwing up is chicken broth, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there is something that replenishes, but even like, like, uh, beef bone broth, um, I believe even has like an antibacterial in it. There is, it's an antiviral antibacterial, um, oh, read up that I have done, um, which was back in 2020. Cause I was about to make my own just in case we got sick. I didn't want to end up going to the hospital. So, um, that was something I was researching into it was specifically beef bone. I get, you know, but, um, you can make, broth out of vegetables too. And I actually do that. I, um, I make my own homemade vegetable broth and I can it and I seal the cans and I store them. Um, and my, I make my soups out of that. And what I do is I take, um, the vegetables, um, any kind of uh, shavings from them. Like when I take carrots and I, you know, uh, get rid of like the, the ends of them or the celery or whatever. And I, I store them in a freezer bag and then I boil it for about two hours and then I will can it. I make broth out of that. Yeah. Yeah. And that too, like when we talk, I was thinking about the whole like juicing as well. When people do the, and that can be considered a fast as well, if you're just juicing. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, you look at, if you're, if you're wanting to do that, look at what your energy is. Like I could not do juice fast because I'm Vata. Those are Vata foods. Like, oh my God. And no food on top of that. I would be like freaking one flew over the cuckoo's nest at that point. I would have like anxiety up the wazoo because that that's the energy. Um, and so I, I would suggest for people to, to again, go see an Ayurvedic practitioner because they can guide you on that, on what is best for your body. If that is something, there are so many benefits to fasting. I mean, cultures since the beginning of time, Yahshua fasted, you know, cultures since the beginning of time have done these practices and there's something very spiritual about them. If you do them correct. Yeah. I can get fasting them. is free and yeah. it can heal so many diseases. It can heal so many people have liver issues and colon issues and fasting is great for those. And it can um, help eliminate some types of cancers. I, I wouldn't like say that it, can you know eliminate all cancers but we're it can not help saying out. yeah we're not giving out a treatment here yeah, <laughs> yeah. but we know what you're saying yes absolutely we do start to destroy cancerous cells yeah. when mm-hmm. we when and I, we're, I think it's past the 48 hour mark so somewhere around there where we're not eating and our body shifts into this um energetic mode where it starts to attack those cells yeah 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 there's like do you had a, i'm sorry go ahead there's a time frame where that happens. I don't remember probably 48 hours or whatever you said, Ava. And then your body also starts to make stem cells. And I think like human growth hormone, which is really good f- just for healing all aspects of your body. Mm-hmm. Liz, I know you had a story about fasting, um, right? You had yeah. a, yeah. yeah. Fasting has been a huge part of my life <laughs> for the last like 10 years like massive it's completely like transformed my life because I've done like no solid food fast um where I would drink water and like I'd put stuff in my water do juices and stuff like that um I think I did 22 days that was like the longest um but it really all started when I went to Africa (laughs) and met my husband um I just had this like sense that I needed to not eat for like 10 days. <laughs> um, and we were like out in the bush in the middle of nowhere, um, which kind of goes along with what Bryce was saying was like, I was kind of like feeding or connecting to the energy of that place. Um, and, and so it kind of, in a way healed my relationship with food because I felt very controlled by food most of my life. Um, cause a lot of my family is obese, And I always had like that fear. So diet culture was huge in our family. Um, And I think it is for most women, (laughs) uh, especially all of our age. Um, But I, it was like a really healing time for me because it also kind of reset my whole body and reset my mindset about food. And then (laughs) I would, I came back from Africa and I would like fast like once a month, anywhere from like, two days to like 
10 to 15 days sometimes. And it just felt like it was what my body needed at the time. And I like felt like I totally leveled up every time that I, every time that I did fast. And so it was kind of like, I need to keep doing this. And it was like very much just like that season of life that I was doing that a lot. And I would explain it to my friends this way when I would, there's a saying that goes, any fool can fast, but it takes a wise man to break a fast. Mm -hmm. Um, And so basically like I like took that to like really heart. And so I would start introducing food back into my diet really slowly, especially after that, like really long fast I did. And I would only eat things that actually felt like it had life in it. So like chicken, I was like, I am eating a dead animal. (laughs) That's, this is death. (laughs) Why am I eating this? And I could just like feel the energy from it. And so I wouldn't eat it. And that's when I started to become vegan. Um, And, and then kind of like eating for my blood type. It was just funny because it, it, it reset me to be eating very close to how like my blood type eats. Um, And it just kind of paved this whole journey for me. So then kind of got out of like the whole like really intense fasting. Um, And I've been doing intermittent fasting for like five years now. Um, And I did at one point before I had Levi, before I was got pregnant with him, I was doing like the one meal a day thing and I loved it. And it felt so right. I had so much energy. I was in the best shape of my life. I didn't feel controlled by food in any kind of way. Um, and so I literally like recommend it to everyone. Cause I feel like it, it just completely reset so many different aspects of my life. Um, and <laughs> most of the time when people are just like, yeah, I really want to like start a diet or something. I'm like, try fasting for like a day or two, <laughs> like try that first. <laughs> well, and uh, you're a good example, Liz, cause you're either, I would, I would guess since you're my friend and guys, I can't diagnose people that I don't know, but I would guess you're either Pitta Kappa or Kappa Pitta. I'm pretty sure I'm Kappa Pitta. I've been thinking about this a lot lately. <laughs> yes. And that, so the Kappa Pitta people are the healthiest people in the world. That's good. They live the <laughs> longest. Okay. And that, so what she's, what you picked up on, that was totally Ayurveda. You oh. picked up on the energy and you picked up on the one meal a day works wonderful for Kappa. Okay. Like that is like for Kappas, like that is yeah. the most, because Kappas, I, I want my next life. I want to come back Kappa. <laughs> Kappa is like the, the personality of a Kappa. It's like they're like potheads without the pot. You know, they're super like kind people. Yeah. Very like, whoa, it's cool, man. Like whatever. It's really, you know, they're super yeah. juicy. Like their joints are super, uh, just buttery and limber and, um, you know, just very, very warm people. And, but they can go, uh, a copa, a copa element can go hours without eating and not feel any type of side effects from it. Um, and it's because you're very earth-based. That's a very earth-based, um, element. And so you, by, by, when you said, when you got off the fast, you, you, you could, it's almost like your taste buds, rebirth themselves because you are able to actually feel the energy and that's what food is is energy and that's something especially in the western world we just like eat mindlessly without even realizing that this is energy this isn't entertainment it's energy and so you picked up on something that's so awesome that you actually listen to your body and your body puts you yeah leveled you to where you needed to be to match you can't change your dosha like it's not going to change you have to work with it Right. And that's even something that I noticed too, is like the more I'm outside, like the reason why I come alive in summer, spring and summertime is because I'm outside barefoot usually. And I don't eat, I don't want to eat anything because I'm like feeling the energy and getting fueled from the sun and the earth. And like, I literally will, for I will not eat all day. If you don't remind me, <laughs> I, I won't. <laughs> I so just, think about, so earth-based, that's a, <laughs> like with the kappa, it's a very grounded energy, mm-hmm. right? Kappas are very grounded earth-based energy. Whereas vata is very uh, air, very cerebral, yeah. right? And so like for me, I have to add kappa foods in to pull the cerebral down. What you figured out on your own was that if I only eat once a day, I'm, I'm now pulling the earth-based up to mm-hmm. meet the air element more which right. is why you're feeling good and balanced. Yeah. And I feel so weighted down when I eat. Mm-hmm. So which weighted is, down. <laughs> which is what, like Natalie, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go on a limb and say, I, I think Natalie's leading dosha is probably Vata as well. 
Mm -hmm. um, and for vatas, it's like that helium balloon that just keeps going up, 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 up. And so we need the, the pulling down. Yeah. It's finding that balance. Right. And that's, that's the fun. Like that is, I, I love the whole, like Liz, you got me on the whole plot twist thing. When you told me about that girl, like, Oh, my boyfriend broke up with me plot twist. You okay. know, <laughs> like that's the whole plot twist is that like yeah. you can figure this out. You can figure right. out your, and figure out how to balance yourself. And when you do find that sweet spot, it mm -hmm. changes. It's a game changer. Right. And then the hardest thing is when I've been pregnant is I have to eat all the time because you're pregnant and you're like, come on. <laughs> See, when I was pregnant, so bored of food. <laughs> I couldn't keep anything down for eight months straight. Oh, gosh. <laughs> except dairy. Only thing I could keep down. I don't know if that is because my AB blood type, because AB blood type loves dairy, but it was the only thing that I could actually ingest and meat was a big no, no. When I was pregnant, I even think about it. I was running to the bathroom. Yeah. So just like if I thought about raw chicken or anything like that, it was horrible. Um, but yeah, I had come to the point where it was just like, nope, dairy. And that was it. And oh, it was quite the experience. Yeah. <laughs> Pregnancy is a different beast in of itself. But Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, but yeah, not I, uh, anymore. <laughs> you what? <laughs> your body's not yours anymore. No, it's not. You literally have a parasite. Think space. <laughs> You're hosting something. You're a landlord. You are. You're <laughs> literally <laughs> hosting something. Oh my yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I think it was awesome to bring all of you ladies on to talk about this, these experiences, because we all have different experiences. We all have different doshas. We all have different bodies. We have, you know, it's, it's, it's a journey and it's a different journey for each and every one of us. Um, and, and of course we like Bryce's, uh, take on the whole dosha thing. Cause that brings a whole different, that's a whole new can of worms that you open with that, with the dosha and everything. So definitely look into an Ayurveda clinic near you. If you are interested in figuring out all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and Bryce, you said, uh, a lot of the inner cities will have these. Yes. So I, a lot of people are saying, oh, there's no Ayurvedic clinic in my area. Yes, there is. Um, you probably just have never noticed it before. Um, so just if you're looking for an Ayurvedic practitioner, you just type it into Google search. You don't even have to go to another search engine, just Ayurvedic clinic, uh, my area. In Atlanta alone, there are five different clinics. If you live in a small town, just look for the nearest city. Um, if you literally, and I was, I was telling Stephanie, uh, some, some practitioners will Zoom with you. They would rather see you though, because they also are going to take your pulse. They're going to look in your eyes. They're going to look at your tongue. There's so much you can learn off about the tongue. I mean, God bless them. I think that's the grossest part of their job, but God bless them for doing it. Um, they might want to feel your stomach, feel your organs to see what's going on. Uh, usually they can tell just by the makeup of your body. Like uh, vatas are very bony. Like I'm very bony. That's a very vata uh, uh, trait. Um, and so just, just Google it in your area. And if fasting, and I wanted to, I talking about diet culture. Yes. Fasting can be a great way to jumpstart a diet, but I really, really want to put it out there. Please don't do fasting because of losing weight alone. Yeah. This is very spiritual. Mm -hmm. I think going into anything, even exercise, and we talked about this, you know, uh, me, uh, Eva, Bryce, we talked about this on a, on a show going into any kind of like exercise regimen with the mindset of only weight loss. No, it's the, these are lifestyle changes that, that, um, first of all, they bring you closer spiritually to God. They align you. They, uh, this is a lifelong practice that really needs to be done, you know, um, because it keeps us aligned. It keeps us detoxed. It keeps us uh, a lot of different things. So, um, having that mindset of, Oh, I have to lose weight. No, that's where I always went wrong with my exercise regimen. And so now when I'm, I'm working out, it's, yeah, I mean, it, the weight loss is happening, but I feel so much spirit. I, there's a more spiritual aspect of it. And, and I will link that, that um, video below if no one has, if people have not seen that. But we get into the whole detoxing thing, and I wanted to kind of bring up a situation I was in with uh, detoxing. Um, my son um, was uh, born with a cord around his neck. Um, he came out blue. There's a lot of different complications. And 
so he was he was okay as a baby he was like a really good baby um the only thing is like i had a hard time like breastfeeding him and stuff like that but as he got older he started to develop these um this horrific anger and he does have a little bit of um, PTSD, as do I, because of the situation we were in with his father. However, there was more to it. And I knew there was. Now, at the time, you know, I was in the medical field. So, of course, I did the childhood, these things at the time. Um, I noticed when he got the one for flu, when he was an infant, something went horrifically wrong. Um, he began to get really finicky about like, uh, not finicky, fussy, very, very fussy. And they do that particular one and two doses for the infants. So um, I did the first dose, noticed something was off and I did not do the second one. And then I never gave him another one of those again, up until uh, 2019 when my sister had a baby and would not allow us to see her baby unless we had that. Um, so... I said, okay, well, he's old, he's older at this point. And unfortunately, my son ended up in the autism psych ward for one month as of February of 2020. Hmm. Um, he was very violent. Um, he tried to kill himself. Um, he, uh, you know, preteens, you know, hormones changing, that extra testosterone that's starting to develop and everything. And it was after that, that he went a little Looney Tune on me. Um, the thing is, I had all these uh, caseworkers coming in, helping out, saying, oh, he's a narcissist, he's a psychopath, this, this, and this. And I looked at him and I said, no, he's not. You don't understand. And I, I'm his mom, so I know his heart. My son has a heart of gold. The moment I get sick, he will sit there next to me. Can I get you water? Can I get make you soup? Can I do this for you? Because that's really a narcissist, right? You know, so I know my son very, very well. And so I did not accept those diagnoses and I refused to have them even mark it down in his chart. So, um, not, I mean, they could have very well did, but I have a lot of paperwork to back it up. So um, I didn't see any of that in there. But when lockdown started in 2020 is when he was hospitalized. And so I couldn't visit him for a full month. And that was horrific, horrific experience. He came home. He was on doped up on more medications um, and he was okay for a little bit, but he started to go back into psychosis again, um, where he was starting to get very agitated easily. And I said, there's got to be more to this. So I'm sick and tired of putting a bandaid on him. And so I took him off all of his meds. And I talked to a couple of women who were already red pilled in my community who um, have autistic kids and they had been giving their kids zeolite. Um, zeolite is um, an ancient, uh, it's created over, I guess, millions of years. I forgot, I should have researched better, but it's, um, it's an all natural like mineral. Um, that is in the ground and um, it's harvested up and to make um, a, a supplement. It can come in a liquid form, a pill form, and it can come in a powder. Um, and so the, it's like a clay the powder. Isn't it from the mix of uh, volcanic yeah. yes, it, and seawater? Yep. Yes. It's like, yeah, when the lava hits the seawater, it creates, you can actually go to a rock store and get zeolite stone. Mm -hmm. It actually, it, it's a, it's in the, it's almost like, um, uh, it's not like sparkly, like amethyst or anything, but it is a stone you can get. And so I started to give him that and I switched him over to an organic non GMO diet. My son has been off of meds for almost two years at this point or a year, a year and a half now, I would say. And his psychosis has not returned. Um, what the zeolite does is it's a heavy metal detox and it was, he was having neuropsychosis from the heavy metals that they put in these things. So I wanted to bring that up because I actually did it myself because I was having a lot of mood issues. Um, uh, and I switched my job, my diet, um, at first before I went on the dosha diet to the organic non-GMO, because all of those things that they create in the lab and put in your food, 
they are neurotoxins. And when you have something like autism, it's a, it's, it attacks the, the neurons, the nervous system. So the central nervous system and, you know, you think about the brain, you know, that's where your moods come from, everything like that. So what it does is it flushes those heavy metals out of your body. Um, and he's been good. It's weird. It's, it's like, and he's so talkative and he's so social and he's, um, for the most part, appropriately social where a lot of autistics are not. So that's kind of my story on detox, but now like I'm doing the exercise for detox and stuff like that. So there's many different avenues of what we would label as detox, but in terms of like a central nervous system disorder or somebody who is um, not neurotypical and has something like an autism type of thing or autoimmune or MTHFR mutation, which I am, I'm double MTHFR mutation where I can't process folic acid. I have to take methylfolate, which is the processed form. Um, it, this, this really kick jumped us into getting rid of the heavy metals out of our body. What um, uh, company did you use? Um, I do. It's called Black Earth. Okay. Yeah. I did and I'll a, link that in the description box below as well. Yeah. I've talked about this many times, but I did a, I did it for like four months straight, a heavy metal and parasite cleanse. And it changed my life also. <laughs> and it, and it changed my son's life. Like he came alive. Like, I mean, he's only yeah. two and I get compliments all the time at the park asking how old he is. Cause he is talking like almost like a three-year-old and super active and very coordinated and creatively plays when he wasn't before. Like, and then for me, I feel like a main reason that I had my miscarriage was because of heavy metals. <laughs> I just like intuitively felt that. So literally the day afterwards I got the, the cleanse and was doing it for like the last four months. And I, it completely opened up everything. I like yeah. became way more spiritually sensitive also for well, doing it. <laughs> it detoxes your, your third eye too. And I also do um, a supplement, which I will also link is called Shilaji, which is an old ancient resin that takes thousands of years to, to actually uh, build up and make. Um, I think you can find it like in the Himalayan mountains and everything. And that's also good um, for heavy metal detox as well. And it, and it opens up all of that, that kind of stuff because I mean, they, they attack our pineal with the fluoride in the water. So that's another thing that we switched over to is definitely I recommend this for everyone filter your water, just filter yeah. it and know your water bottle. Water is not filtered water. So it's fluoride in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Whatever it's, plastic is leached into the water. So. Yeah. Yeah. The PBAs. Yep. PBA is a, is a heavy, it's a, is a bad um, toxicity as well. And, and hormone so there's, disruptors. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. They attack your thyroid. Mm -hmm. No, that that's another thing. The iodine that they don't, um, they, they take out of the water. You're, um, if you don't have enough iodine, you're going to have thyroid problems. Mm -hmm. So um, like uh, we do a multi-mineral um, thing where we, it's like a dropper multi-mineral and you put it in your water. It's, it doesn't taste like anything. It's clear. It's got manganese. It's got the iodine. It's got uh, boron. That's another thing that our water is missing. And the, all these different elements that are missing in our water create a lot of like uh, deficiencies because our natural water is supposed to have all this stuff. Yeah. It's also interesting too, like even going back to the whole, like your body doesn't need that much water. <laughs> Um, my husband, when I met him, he like never drank any water ever. <laughs> if he did, it was like a cup, like once or twice a day. And, you know, like their water, like hurts my stomach in Mozambique because it's got way different bacteria and minerals and stuff that I'm not used to. It probably, it probably would be good for me if I got used to it, but, um, and he came here and I was like, you need to drink more water. And he's like, why? Like, I don't. <laughs> I don't need it. <laughs> it. It was always this like fight between us. Cause he would just like have like two glasses of water a day. And I'm over here drinking gallons, <laughs> but yeah. you know, he just, he just knew that intuitively and culturally that you don't need it. Like if you're thirsty, drink some water. Like that's yeah. it. You know? Your body will give you signs when you're dehydrated. You know, obviously the first being um, your pee is like Brown. You know, yeah. that's like the biggest sign, but you'll start to feel, sometimes you'll feel hunger pains that aren't really hunger pains when you're actually thirsty. 
Mm -hmm. um, that's a sign too. But no, we Americans, we try to drink water like it's going out of style and it's not. It's interesting though with the filtered water because my dog is a rescue from India. And so he's like half wild. And it's been very interesting to watch him maneuver being in a city because I grew up with a bunch of like domesticated dogs. My father's a vet. So we had tons of dogs. And Ravi, when we go, we live right by Piedmont Park, which is like our central park here in Atlanta. It's huge. And so if I take Ravi down to the park for a walk or whatever, they're, they have dog bowls all over the park for the dogs. And, you know, by a little pump, you can pump more water, but it's city water. Ravi won't drink it. It doesn't matter how hot it is. He won't touch it. But if you go by a creek, he'll drink that water. Mm -hmm. and, and it's interesting because it's like, because he's half wild, and because he wasn't bred, uh, it was, you know, natural selection. He can smell it when, mm -hmm. when it's not okay, when it's poison. And yeah, the water is poison. And, um, you know, it's, uh, we were laughing before we came on. I mean, I've been very honest. Like I'm a huge fan of microdosing and microdosing. One of the benefits of microdosing is it clears out the heavy metals in your brain. And that's something that's unavoidable. If you live in the Western world and you think about all the things they put in the sky, you know what I'm talking about? We can't say it on YouTube mm -hmm. from the airplanes, those beautiful rainbows that are white. Um, you're, you're breathing in heavy metals. There's just a certain amount. You're, you're never going to be able, we, we won't be able to escape to escape at all until we leave the matrix behind. Um, and one thing that microdosing does do is it does help get rid of those heavy metals. It also helps um, if you are, do you have addiction problems? Actually microdosing helps with that. Mm -hmm helps with that. And it's, 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 you know, I, I've been very honest in, in my channel that I, I was diagnosed with complex post-traumatic stress disorder a while ago. And so I know I have, and that's easy for a Vata person because we're already anxiety prone to anxiety, you know? And so, um, with these microdosing, it also helps kind of calm that down as well and kind of detox the emotions too. Um, Bryce, for those who didn't, happened to see that video, I think with you and Catherine Edwards with the microdosing. Can you explain to the audience what microdosing is for those who are not aware of what it is? So microdosing, I'm going to have to be careful how I say this. I think here in the United States, we're a little bit safer. I know over in the UK, they have to be careful. Um, you know, the topping on a salad, you can put like mushrooms on a salad if you want. You guys, know what I'm saying, that's what I'm talking about. But the special ones, mm -hmm. um, there's a great, um, podcast with joe rogan where he talks about he's done all this research into these particular plant-based we'll say plant-based medicine mm -hmm. and how the human brain if you look how the human brain developed i'm paraphrasing totally paraphrasing what the research he did over other species it developed a lot faster than other species and it all comes back to humans finding this particular plant now, it, ironically, it does grow under cow poo <laughs> and cow poo in India is sacred. So maybe there's some truth to that. <laughs> well, cow poo helps plants grow. And yeah. also is a good you garden. You use cow poo. Yeah. Um, if you read the Hatha Yoga Pritikapa, which is a, another like sister manual to the Yoga Sutras, it's only 2000 years old where the sutras are like 5000. It's like a manual on how to run your shala. And they talk about cleaning with cow poo. Like that's how you clean your shalas with cow poo. Um, and so these, these, uh, these plants will say, now I will raise my hand and say that I love a good day outing, we'll say, instead of a trip, um, <laughs> girl, girl, <laughs> girl, 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 I'm sheltered over person. here, guys. I'm really sheltered. <laughs> I, I mean, I love it for the the healing aspects and that like I love that you called it a what did you call it a journey? Or a yeah, well, it can be a journey. Yeah, yeah. I call it journeying because I feel like the word trip gives it like this um, negative connotation or like I'm abusing the plant. But I I really. I like legitimately appreciate it as a teacher and as a yeah. healer. And I really connect with that specific type of plant and a, a couple others. And like I said, I love it for the healing aspect and for the work. Like I call it going in because like, mm -hmm. it, you know, you have this, you're able to access other areas of your, your mind and of 
essentially reality and see past certain mm-hmm. blockages and, and like, I don't know, pull out and, and literally see other things and experience yep. life differently. And fe- and it, I've learned and I feel like I have overcome so much through journeying with mushrooms. So, yeah, um, it's so that the full day's worth, what I typically do is I make it in a, I put the, the long, the whole bundle of, of plant in like a peanut butter sandwich and I eat it. Now in that situation, usually I will then throw up like 30 minutes later. That happens sometimes but that actually clears you. And you're right. When you do the full load um, in that situation, you can't live your life outside of it because you are so inundated. You do see past the veil. The first time I ever did it, I was like, holy shit. You can see the vibrations of all the plants Mm-hmm. Um, you can see your own vibration. Uh, I've Baker never really, hall- yeah, I've that. never hallucinated in the sense where I've seen things that weren't there. It's just, you see the full essence mm-hmm. of the spirit of the thing. And I remember the first time I did it, I had the realization that this was all just, uh, um, the hologram yes. and that we were yeah. so much more than, and everything, even the tree was so much more than just a tree. Mm-hmm. And so you think about the full dose of that. And now when you do the micro, you're just doing like a tiny little, you know, if a whole serving is like this big, one day you're doing like that much. Mm-hmm. You can measure it out and I can give details to that. I want to be careful about what I say uh, to people who, who want to do it. And it does actually the first day I did it, I was like waiting for the to like speak into it and nothing ever happened. Everyone was like, it's not supposed to <laughs> like, it's just, but over time, the more you do it, the more you find that your mind kind of settles into this place of, of more acceptance. Like I, I noticed like my anxiety totally like dissipates with this. And now sometimes it will hit you in the sense, like you'll all of a sudden feel like a wave of something like kind of a spiritual wave. Um, I mean, that's the same. A lot of times these plants, this is the same with like ayahuasca or peyote it, it's a medicine that like calls to you, you know, I know, especially in the ayahuasca communities. Um, and before lockdown, I was actually planning on going to Peru to do dieta, which is 10 days where you're literally stuck in the Amazon with a shaman who doesn't speak English and you don't speak Spanish. And they're chanting over you every night, giving you this medicine, it's plant medicine. And it's not, it's not like you're going to go party on the, these, these aren't part. This isn't about like, Oh no, no, it's a butt kicking. <laughs> yeah. It's like, like a, it. it's like speeding up your, it's like, we talked about the yoga practice speeds up your karma. This is going to speed it up mm-hmm. and you're going to have come to Jesus moments and dark night of the soul. And, and that's kind of what these, these medicines do. But like we were talking about the exercise video about how it, it triggers you. And it sometimes exercise will pull up issues within yourself that you need to face. Well, it's the same with the plant medicine in a lot of of ways. And so therefore it does help detox because everything that's, that's, that we struggle with addiction, whatever it is, is part of our karmic lesson. Mm -hmm. And so in order to detox anything, whether that's uh, anxiety, stress, um, cancer, whatever it is, in order to deal with it, we have to actually deal with it. We have to figure out the root cause of it, which is always emotional and always mental in our psyche. And so some of these, from from my experience with the microdosing, that really helps you settle into facing things and and finding peace with that. And um, and I I believe in in the new timeline that these, it's interesting to me. I know, Stephanie, we've talked about this, that the word for sorcery in the Bible is what? Pharmakia. Pharmakia. Pharmacy, which is. But yet. Pills and. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, all uh, this like all natural stuff is uh, demonized and everything and considered illegal, D-R-U-G-S. And And witchcraft, yeah. And yeah, Yeah. and that's the thing, like, I always wondered about like, um, I don't know if this is a trigger word, but we'll just say, um, you know, the reefer, I don't know. Um, You know, that's, uh, there's a medicinal purposes to that too. And I I guess I'll I'll even come out and admit this. So, um, you know, there was uh, a, a little while back, I did a, a little piece of an edible chocolate. And um, yeah, I had this, like, okay, I I can see. I had all these past life visions. I, I swear I did like a past life regression doing that. That was that was crazy. And it was just like, 
one after the other. I'm like, can you make it stop? I, I want to remember these things. I want to write it down. And it was so quick. And then the next day I took a little piece and I, something pissed me off. Well, I had a coming to Jesus moment. And then I realized there was some sort of karma I had to clean up. And so I, I figured it out through that. And now, meanwhile, I, I could have swore I thought I was going to have a heart attack and die because my chest was burning. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to the hospital. I can't go to the hospital right now because they're going to, you know, they're going to do this to me. And I'm like, nope. Nope. I'm supposed to be alive. I'm supposed to be alive. So I had to calm myself down. You know, it was like one of those things where maybe I was too cerebral at that time, you know, and I had to kind of ground myself. And I, I did have a little coming to Jesus moment, but that was, that was not fun. Um, <laughs> but the day before was fine. And I, I had a lot of spiritual realizations, but these, these plants, they grow out of the ground. Do you think God would grow a poison out of the ground if it was supposed to be illegal and not meant for your spiritual health or whatever you're going to use it for, God would not allow those things to grow in the ground. You know what I mean? Versus these man-made things that we just, oh, I have a headache, so I, I'm going to pop an Advil. You know what I mean? It's, you know, that's more toxic for you than than um, these different, we'll call them supplements. And that's yeah. actual sorcery because someone's created that. Whereas, yeah. and the thing about too, I want to reiterate with um, plant based medicine, you really can't overdo it because it's not like you're not partying on it. You know, you're not like, it, it's going to give you a limit because it is a journey and you need to take breaks and you need to now with the micro, you can do it every day because it doesn't bring you that deep. It just kind of skims the surface. Um, but yeah, so th it's not like you're going to over there. It's your body's going to, eventually you're going to be like, I emotionally need a break, you know, like, um, it, it's, it's, so it's, it's interesting to see what, what they've all labeled as bad and what is good when it's actually flipped mm -hmm. and another, you know, if, if someone's still a little bit, you know, squeamish, if there's still some indoctrination with people, which I understand, which comes to, when it comes to like plant-based medicine, um, there's other ways to detox as far as like simple supplements, um, intestinal movement formula by health force is something that I've recommended to you, Stephanie. I re recommend it to so many people because it, it cleansed me big time. Um, I, when I first started figuring out that I was Vata, one of the, one of the elements of Vata is dryness because it's air. And so like, I have really dry skin. Um, my colon is dry. So that means Vata's usually struggle with going to the bathroom, you know, because the colon's dry. And so I did a total uh, cleanse with intestinal movement formula and it knocked my ass out. Like I had fevers. I like you literally know, Bryce, literally, I literally, literally <laughs> it did, like literally. And, and, but it, it literally cleansed everything. And after that things got regulated and that's just a simple um, over the counter. You can help for us as the company. I will um, put that in the, uh, I'm going to link that too. Cause I, yeah, that, and I recommend that brand. Um, which was going to lead me into my next thing that I wanted to talk about too, but I'll let you finish. No, I'm just, it, it doesn't, you don't have to, if you're, if you're interested in detoxing, there are things that you can do that are minimal, you know, pop a couple of, and it's all herbs. All it is. It's not, there's nothing chemical about it. It is plant-based, but it's not like gonna, although I will say I was laughing with one of my friends who did it, that when you do intestinal movement for me, you start cleansing yourself after you cleanse, you kind of feel like you're on a high because all of a sudden yeah everything yeah. just kind of like you feel Vibrating. the blood rush, right? Because the blood is, I mean, we talk when the colon can't function, the toxins in the blood can't get to the colon to then pass through. And so you don't even realize how crappy you feel mm -hmm. until you don't feel crappy anymore until the well, body's able to function. It's, it's like, uh, you know, if you go to use your bathroom sink, for instance, or your kitchen sink, you know, over time, sludge builds up and builds up. And sometimes you get that little bit of a clog. Um, and, and so the water doesn't pass through until, well, I, I'm a total, I'm, I'm against Drano, but let's say you use Drano and that's the intestinal movement, you know, stuff. Um, and then it allows the water to go through that. Your intestines are your inner plumbing. That's your plumbing. And so 
working in the medical field, one of the biggest things I notice with people is that people get like things like diverticulosis, which then develops into diverticulitis, which is a pouching of the intestine because there's so much packed in there and it sorry to get gross, but, and it hasn't come out that it starts to like balloon out the intestine. That's a very dangerous illness. And then they put you on flagell and awful, awful, awful antibiotics that will make you more sick than the actual disease itself. But, you know, it's, um, that, it, that's also good too. When, when, when we're going to talk about the fasting too, because then it gives that plumbing a break you know, uh, from, from working for a little while and gives it a little bit of a, a resting time. But when we have things like anxiety or depression or our energy level is so off, chances are your colon needs a little bit of um, Drano. Not, not literally, figuratively. Okay, let me make that. Don't go and buy Drano and drink it. Just don't do like that. Don't, tea, they're going to be like, oh, no, don't, don't recommend it. <laughs> it's really... But, oh. It's really interesting that you just mentioned that about the colon. I'm sorry to interject. That's okay. This is really short, but um, Natalie and I just did a video on the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction um, in the full moon that happened around it. And some of the the uh, organs that were impacted during that time or that were supposed to be giving more TLC during that time are the digestive um, and then also the kidneys and the bladder. Um, huh. And the yeah, colon one? the colon was one. Yeah. So it's, it's really interesting that we're talking about this now because that full moon energy is still carrying over. And this is a time to really be uh, showing that those parts of our body love because they're a little bit more sensitive and prone to, um, I don't know, disruption, I guess. So yeah, I, it, that just popped into my head. It's timely. Well, and then working in the medical field as well, Steph, like so many of the patients I worked with were uh, constipated. And it's like that energy is like it's holding on to stuff in that um, sacral region. And then me and Ava were talking about all the emotions associated there. And it's almost like they're just holding on to all of that emotion and stuff that they just can't cleanse out. Yeah. And that goes into the story. Don't let shit back you up. Yeah. You get, that goes into the chakra <laughs> system as well. And can I share screen, Stephanie? I was going to, speaking of the colon, I'll show you guys. I, I think I, I did this um, on Aquarius Rising Africa. But yes, you guys have uh, this. We have the same amount of like what neurons in our stomach as we do in our uh, head. And so the stomach becomes like the second uh brain almost. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if you guys can see this. This is uh, me doing Uriana Bunda. Um, in a Kriya, Uriana Bunda Kriya. So Uriana Bunda, we, we've talked about the chakras and all that kind of stuff. Stephanie, I just did a video on that. I talked about some Aquarius rising Africa. You can see I've got my stomach really sucked in here. Um, that's a practice. If that's something you want to learn, you definitely need to teach her to teach you how to do it because you have to do this on like no breath where you exhale completely out and then suck everything in. And what it does is it pushes that colon up. Now there's some different Kriyas that Men can practice like the rolling of the stomach. They don't want women to practice because of our uterus, um, but men can practice this. And this is an exercise to get the colon to kind of start to move, right? And with the chakra system, yeah, there is emotional stuff going on with, with constipation, with any type of organ disruption on top of the dosha. So there's so many different elements involved in what's happening with our how our organs function but this is one thing that they suggest doing in the morning like right when you first wake up now again if you when i as someone who has been involved in a very strenuous uh intense yoga practice for 15 years now i will tell you if you eat a big heavy meal the night before and get up at four o'clock in the morning to practice it's not going to be fun you're going to feel everything in that stomach. And so part of that intermittent fasting also clears out the colon so that you can then get more movement in the area. Something we, when we think about flexibility, we always think about the joints and the, the, the everything in the, in the gross body, but we don't ever think about the organs. The organs also have to remain, keep, keep flexible. And as we get older, that's the one thing that does, that stops to happen. That's another reason for inversions and twisting is to get the organs to continue 
to create that flexibility. Now, I think I said it with you, Stephanie, um, if someone is hyper constipated, the student is hyper constipated, we don't let them practice. So if they come in into the morning and you can tell if they're really bloated and you can tell as a teacher, you have to stop them from practicing because they can bruise their internal organs. And yes, a lot of these um, asanas, these postures in yoga are designed to help the colon, but if it's gotten to the point where it's impacting on itself, something needs to be done. And, you know, um, a colonic, I've done colonics a lot, and that is a Kriya in the yoga um, practice. A Kriya is like a cleanse. It's a Kriya is, is a colonic. And I had a lot of success before I ever did. So like, here's a good twisting picture. If, if you know, if your colon's pat impacted, this is not going to be beneficial, but if it's empty, you're going to be able to get those organs to move. Right. But colonics, you can find colonics in most cities. And it is was one of the most, the first time I ever did a colonic, it was literally one of the most crazy experiences to like, and you can literally watch it. Like, I know that sounds gross. And they told me that my first time I went, they were like, you're going to want to watch this. And I was like, really? They're like, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. You are watching everything that is coming out of you. That has some, some of that's been in there for years. And that's what a small movement formula will do as well. It'll pull stuff out. It gets into the crevices of the colon to pull things out that have literally impacted. Like colors are going to come out of you that you, that shouldn't be coming out of you. Goes back to that. Uh, what does it say in Super Troopers? I'll believe me when me shit comes out purple and tastes like rainbow sherbet. <laughs> That could possibly happen. <laughs> Fun movie, by agree. the way. Fun movie. <laughs> and I'm going to put this on my my channel too. So this is Intestinal Movement for my guys. This is um, from Health Force. It's a great company. They have lots of stuff. They have like stuff for your your liver. Uh, the Scram. Like I did a, le a liver detox once. Now I am not opposed to drinking. Down here, I know a lot of truthers are, but my whole view on that is if you if you have your own personal demons to deal with, that's probably going to come out when you're drunk anyway. Um, and I don't have that. I've always been a very happy drunk. So, um, so I'm not opposed to it, but with that being said, I'm not really a big drinker because my lifestyle doesn't allow for that. Um, so when I first did the liver detox, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to need this. Like, I'm not really giving my liver that much crap to, to work through. Holy crap. The amount of detox that came out of that liver when I did the scram, I was well, shocked. Liver the mm -hmm. liver filters toxins out of your body. So mm -hmm. if you're in an inner city, Bryce, and you're, you're breathing in heavy metals, guess what? It goes in the liver. Yep. It's your body's trash can. Yep. It is. I, I've and talked anger about stored the, there too. So yeah, I've talked about oh. the detox, the pair the, the liver detox that I've done. I used to, I did it for like nine months straight and, um, or like once a month for nine months. <laughs> um, and, um, I was the same, like, I'm not, if I ever drink anything, I drink wine maybe like once a month, like, you know, hardly anything. And I was shocked, <laughs> absolutely shocked. But I did it a little differently than Bryce. I did it with um, olive oil, lemon juice, and Epsom salt. I've done that one. <laughs> that one's yeah. a rough one. <laughs> <laughs> that one's rough. <laughs> yeah, that was really rough. Like I, celery, never, I never, I never had a help with the liver. Yeah, I don't it's like all. the smell of lemons now because of that cleanse. <laughs> but so apparently like non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is like on the rise from just, like 20 year olds, teenagers yeah. and that kind of stuff. And it's just a lot of our food. So like you don't have to even have an ounce yeah. of alcohol like, like that you've ever taken. And all that's that, my, that was my lesson because I thought my liver was fine and, and it just, mm -hmm. you know. And One of the biggest ways to heal the non-fatty stuff liver is fasting. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not someone like, I'm not saying guys that I, I again, I want to reiterate with these cleanses. I know people who have taken it too far with cleanses where they've been told by Ayurvedic doctors, like you got to stop, hmm. you got to stop. Like this is, you're going to kill yourself. So you, you need much to of anything. is not good though. Yeah. Too much of anything. Yeah. So I want to, I want to reiterate that with people like as, as, as Liz said, she did like once a month for nine months and then you take a break and you let, you let the toxin go back up again. You know, it's like a game, you know? So, um, well, I got pregnant, so I couldn't do it while I was pregnant <laughs> and then I was nursing, couldn't do it while I was nursing. So yeah. that happened to me with intestinal movement formula. I got so, I, I went through the cleanse process and then I felt so good that I just kept taking it every single day just to keep regulated. 
And all of a sudden, one day I took it and I got nauseated and threw up. And I thought that I just gotten a, a bad batch of, of pills. And so I called help force and they were like, this is your body telling you that it's time to stop. Hmm. I was like, cool. oh. Oh, yeah. And one important aspect is you have to make sure your detox pathways are open. Because if you're detoxing and those pathways are blocked, you're just making a big jam. Yeah. And nothing can yeah. actually be eliminated. Well, yeah. With that liver cleanse that you and I've done, um, you have to fast the day before, or at least I did. I fasted the day before. I had lots of water and minerals, and then I did it <laughs> so that there was just like a clear pathway. <laughs> And that's why another reason why you should probably for anybody who's really, you probably should go see an Ayurveda practitioner just to make sure um, you're yeah. doing the best thing for your, so what works for me. And I said this with our exercise video. So many people have now asked me to like give them a diet with a dosha is like, there's no diet to give you because everybody's going to be different. Every Vata Pitta is going to be different. It just depends on how much Vata you have versus how much Pitta you have, which is going to be different for different people. Same thing with these cleanses and these fasting things. That is why it's important to, to see some why. I mean, you can experiment with, with herbs and stuff, but I would definitely, if you're confused or concerned about these things, I would definitely go see a practitioner and talk to them about it and have them give you, give you their best advice. Can I just bring something up? Why in the world would anybody ask Bryce to give him a diet plan? Please answer me that because that is I not Bryce's responsibility. That's not my responsibility. That's your responsibility <laughs> as the conduit of your own body. I think so this is where so we're seeing the same at the attachments to the matrix. Because being codependent. <laughs> before this, we go to doctors, they give us a diet plan. We go to Weight Watchers, they give us a diet plan. We go to Jenny Craig, they give us a diet plan because we've been conditioned to believe that one size fits all. You have healthy foods, you have non-healthy foods. And that's just simply not true. That no. is not true. Broccoli is not healthy for me. Broccoli will hurt me. It it's poison me. for my body. It's got to be raw though for me. Raw, raw broccoli is, is great. So you- my body. You are a special little flower that needs its own special little flower food. And my diet is not going to work for every, for you. Even if you're a Vata Pitta like me, my diet might not work because I might have more Vata than Pitta than you do. You might have, you might be more even in Pitta Vata. And so it's going to, it's going to translate differently as to how your body accepts energy. And so that is why a practitioner is going to be able to help you. And I am not an Ayurvedic practitioner. I know a lot about Ayurveda because it's the sister science of yoga. I know enough about it to, in, it to inform me how I teach as like, a, like, for example, as a teacher, if Natalie was my student and Liz were both my students. So I look at Natalie, I see she's Vata like me. I know Liz is Kappa Pitta. I'm assuming Natalie's probably Vata Pitta. I know that I have to teach Natalie different than Liz because if she's leading with Vata, that means that Natalie has already got a lot of air, which is going to translate potentially to anxiety. And so I'm going to have to teach her differently to try to balance that aspect of the way she's perceiving the lesson versus Liz. Liz is going to be able to take, to, to take a little bit more um, aggressive teaching, actually. Tough love. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas like Bach is not going to be able to take that. And I see that with my teacher in India. He's very soft-spoken with me when he teaches to me. Very soft-spoken. But then he'll scream across the room at somebody else. Mm. Right. It's how, so you think about that way. So even as a yoga teacher, as an Ashtanga teacher, I'm trained enough to be able to look at a student and be like, I know, I kind of know what their leading dosha is. So this has to now inform me how I handle them as a student, because now I understand how they're taking information in, um, through their energy cycles of thought. Same thing with your food, same thing with detoxing, same thing with fasting. You have a particular disposition of energy and that is like sacred that. to you. I feel like that just gave me so much insight on my marriage. <laughs> That's why I was laughing. Oh, yeah. like, wow. <laughs> Maybe I should take some notes because I'm pretty sure Johnny is a uh, Vata, Vata Pitta. <laughs> like, no wonder I have to be so, like, gentle. <laughs> like, yes. So think about that. So you have to treat, you have to treat, treat a Vata in the manner of a Kappa. So if a Kappa is like a pothead without the pot, 
that's how you kind of have to be the Vata. Like, it's fine. Because otherwise, the Vata is going to be crying in the corner, rocking back and forth, having a nervous breakdown. <laughs> because that's how, that's the disposition. There's really positive. I think I need to be reprimanded like I'm Vata. Well, I'm Tridosha, so I'm, I'm a special kind of special. Tridoshas um, are the hardest because that's like, you know, when you're when you're only a, a du du dual dosha, you can just pull up the dosha that's lacking. And that's usually how you can handle it. But when you're a try, you have to find that balance. Um, I, yeah. I have too much fire. So don't be fiery at me. You got to be a little bit more. It's okay. You know, well, you could have the pretensity, a propensity uh, for, you know, overdoing if you, if you get aggressive, like becoming, you know, and we have to look at the time of life too, right? So all of us, all five of us are in our pitta time of life right now. So when fiery. every child, every baby <laughs> Levi is in the cup of time of life. It's hard to diagnose a child's dosha because they're still developing, but every child is in the, the cup of time of life because that's when you're cocooning, you're nice and like squishy and, you know, kids kind of want everyone to get along, you know, they're sweet, you know, those are kids. Then after you go through puberty for everyone, you then go into pitta. That's the fire element. So that's when you're, you know, having babies and building your house and building your business. As one of my Ayurvedic teachers said, nothing scarier than a mom in a minivan. Like that pit to like, rrr, like that pit to like, you know, I got to do this. You know, the Karens of the world, right? The, the real pit to, then once we go through menopause for women, for men, you know, you just got to wing it because you got nothing to really show you. You've entered into the Vata stage, which is your cerebral. Is it climate. expired or not? There yeah, you go. It's, it's the end of life. It's Vata. So you become, you start thinking more about, you know, spirituality, the afterlife. Now for me as a Vata. When I get to that Vata stage of life, because I've already struggled with arthritis, I know that's something I have to look for because I'll be in Vata Vata. And I'm also by then, time. you might have a couple hundred years until I you know. Get I'm thinking that, that might all change once we flip that. into the 400 year cycle. So we're going to be, we're going to be in Pitta for a long time. Yeah, that's a ways <laughs> off. We're still in our prime. Bring on the fire. Bring yep. on the fire. <laughs> you know, so that, that also informs it as well. You know, that also yeah. informs most people who are actively doing this are in their Pitta time of life. You know, once you get into Vata time of life, I think you're like, whatever, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's all good. <laughs> you know, it, so. just, it brings light to, to a lot of different things and understanding, you know, just who we are. And I, I foresee that maybe teachers in the, in the future, which even children might have to adjust their, mm -hmm. you know, teachings based off of how you do for your, your yoga students. That's actually very interesting that you bring that up. I never thought of that. That's crazy. Yeah, it's not. You have to. You yeah. have to. Um, Pittas are actually the easiest to teach because they're already going to get on the mat and try to like work their butt off because, and that's my Pitta comes out too in my mat as well because they're athletic. Pittas are athletes. They have good I muscle. They're you're, you're, yeah, you're a lot that's of me. I'm, I'm I was always fiery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm fiery. I'm athletic. I, my, my build is more muscular. It always has been. I always had the muscular thighs and I, I was the pitcher, you know, cause I, throw well and I was the swimmer yeah that was me um, so now I, I did get a little pudgy and squishy but that's going away so it's all good squishy the pitas they're, squishy. they're they're not hard to like with like kappas you have to light the fire under a kappa get them to especially kappa vata you really got to get them to light that fire but with all right everybody's like the lighter on Natalie. That's what I was totally thinking. I was like, in my mind, fire. I'm like, <laughs> light, <laughs> light that fire. But, but once, once a Vata Kappa or Kappa Vata finds that fire, oh man, they change the most in the practice. They're the ones that change the most because they have that element coming in now. Whereas people who are Pitta, you have to sometimes be like, hold on, you're, do you're doing too much. Like you don't need to do pinch my Ross in a 20 times, like move on next posture, you know, like, you know, it, it becomes, um, it, you know, so that's, that's, uh, that's where the pitta has to put, but as far as getting them to do it, they'll do it, you know, cause pittas are like, they're athletes, you know, they're the people that will go eight hours on a soccer field, you know? I have a question now with this. Now we'll, we'll end soon. Cause we're almost at an hour and a half here. Whoa. Um, we're just having too much fun. Now let's say you have, let's say your pizza, whatever, and you got fire in your birth chart. Does that make a difference? Uh, like I the, think so, because okay. I have air, I, I'm an Aquarian, so I'm, I'm air and Vata. That's also air, but I also have fire and the Leo was my, my, uh, son, uh, no rising is in Leo. And then I'm also Pitta as the second dosha. So I do think in my opinion, 
um, Guruji was an astrologer, my teacher's teacher. And so he could look at somebody and know exactly what planetary alignment they were under. And he Whoa. wouldn't, he would only do, so he would, he went a step further where he would only do certain adjustments on certain days for you because of your personal planetary alignment. That is oh. so awesome. I love that. I mean, that's shamanistic. So intra yeah. I can't do that, guys. If you come to my classes, I don't know how to do that. I can just do the stuff. Oh, girl, <laughs> I'm sitting here like, how do I figure that out? I mean, I'm like, 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 that's the level I want to be at. I'm right? be like, well, the Joyces, so the Joyce family, they were astrologers for a long yeah. time. And this is big in India. So they trained in it. And I guess it's just the same as me being able to pick doshas by looking at people's personalities sure the same thing they were able to kind of see and he already knew because he studied uh cosmology studied the, the stars so much that he was able to kind of see the alignment and then know where people fell within within their birth chart and it, it if it was a day that was good for you to get cranked which the yoga surgery where he could aggressively if the planets were aligned perfectly he would move in it and do it um work, that's working with na with your nature you know, if it was oh. not a good day for, for your alignment, you did not get this, the same type of, of adjustment. So there's so much that makes you as an individual, there's so much, not just the doshas, the astrology, um, all that kind of stuff makes you very unique, kind of like your thumbprint, your fingerprint is just yours. And that's why I can't give you a diet plan. That's why, because you really have to work with someone with you specifically, you know? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, this was fascinating. Um, wow. My mind is blown on some of the things I learned. Um, this whole dosha thing is like, you know, like explosion in the head. I just, I think I had a brain implode <laughs> just now. Um, but anyways, I think this is like very informative. Maybe we'll have to do a part two to this one day because there's so much to talk about because um, we didn't get to alkalizing the body yet. So we'll do that next time if we decide to do a part two on this because that's important as well. But I wanted to thank you all for joining me on this wonderful round table. Thanks for having Kick us. Kick ass ladies. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is our move, Bryce. <laughs> you guys I'm have to about the bud that whenever I go to India and I come back from India, I'm always bobbling my head. It just happens because you just you're there for so long that you just start like bobbling your head. <laughs> Oh my, my teacher gets really mad. He's like, you are going to throw your neck out. Us, we are, we bubble our head from the time we're little. Our neck's strong enough. You people don't. You're going to throw your neck out. I'm like, I'm a Westerner. Stop head. <laughs> <laughs> Got the head bubble. <laughs> That's funny. You do it a little slower. <laughs> well, so, um, apparently my friends from India tell me that there's a bobble for yes, no, maybe. I haven't learned that yet. I just see this. There's a different type of, of bobble, so I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Well, that, that's also fascinating. <laughs> we can talk about that bobbling next. <laughs> Very limber next. Yes. Very limber next. <laughs> I love you all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. For Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.